Today is Thursday, January 21st. Let's go ahead and review our lessons from this week. So on Tuesday, we discussed how Korah had risen up against Moses and he had gotten two other people to be on his side, Datham and Abiram, and also the 250 people to be on their side because they wanted a new leader. They did not want Moses to lead them anymore. Korah felt like he would be a better leader for the people. So they started what was called a rebellion against Moses and against Aaron as well because they didn't believe that Aaron was the only person who could be the high priest. Their issue really was with God and it was not with Moses and Aaron because God chose Moses and Aaron and God placed them there. So their problem, uh, they had a problem with the Lord. And so Moses went before the Lord and he prayed and God told Moses he would show not only the, the, the rebellious, but God would show all of Israel who he had chosen as his people. Moses stood in front of the people and he said, we are going to confirm who God has chosen. He said, if these men die a natural death, which is a regular death, like a disease, accident, he says, then God did not choose me. He says, but if something miraculous happens, like the ground opens up and swallows them and everything that they own, then we will know that God sent me. And sure enough, right after Moses said that, that's exactly what happened. The ground opened and swallowed up the men in their tents. And then after that, the Lord sent fire upon the 250 who also were a part of the rebellion. So the Hebrews started to criticize Moses and Aaron, saying that it was wrong what happened to those to the rebellious. And they were saying that God was wrong for punishing them. So a plague, God sent a plague and it started striking the people and people were just falling dead. But it was because of them trying to say that the Lord was wrong for punishing sin. And so they begged Moses to ask the Lord to stop the plague, which he did. Aaron offered a sacrifice. And so the Lord stopped the plague. And so the people, they are learning not to play with God and not to say that God is wrong whenever he decides to punish sin. God has to deal with sin. And so this was also a lesson for the people not to rebel against who God had chosen. So yesterday we discussed how the people continued their journey through the promised land and over the course of the 40 years, all those who couldn't enter into the promised land, those who were 20 and older, they all ended up dying. And so now it was their children who were now adults and now it would be time for them to go into the promised land, just like the Lord had said that anyone who was younger would go, but anyone who was above 20 could not go. So they arrived at the border of the promised land and they didn't go in yet, but as they arrived at the border of the promised land, the, the chill, even though these are the children, um, they're not their parents, they still did what their parents did because they began to complain about water. They were thirsty. They said, we need water. They were like, we're going to die in this place. And so Moses was so upset with the people. And so he went before the Lord and he's like, God, why do they continue to complain? And so the Lord spoke to Moses and told him what to do. He said, Moses, go and stand before the people, bring them all before a rock. And I want you to speak to the rock and water will come out of the rock. And so God gave Moses specific instructions to follow when he came to doing performing this miracle. So Moses brought all the people before the rock. And Moses, instead of speaking to the rock, he ended up striking the rock and he struck it twice, not only once, but twice. And so water did come out. God still did perform the miracle, but Moses was in disobedience. He didn't follow God's command and God's instructions to speak to the rock. And so the Lord told Moses because of that, because he didn't listen to the Lord, that Moses would not be able to enter into the promised land and i'm sure this was sad for moses because he called the people out of egypt he was chosen to lead the people out of egypt to bring them to the promised land and he wouldn't be able to go into the promised land him and aaron and so we finished the lesson off with aaron um and his son went into the mount because god said that aaron also wouldn't go into the promised land and it was also aaron's time to die and so before he died he passed on the high priest job or position to his son his son Eleazar was now the high priest and so whenever they came back down the mountain all the people saw that Aaron did not return so they knew that Aaron had died and so they grieved for Aaron but remember they're still right at the border of the promised land so they are going to go into the promised land real soon
This Bible lesson will be our last lesson on the life of Moses. We started off our lesson learning about how the Lord had protected him whenever the Pharaoh commanded all the Hebrew baby boys be thrown into the river. God protected Moses. His mom made the basket. He was put in the river. The princess found him. And Moses grew up in the palace, but he always had a desire to help his people. The first time he went to check on his people, he did make a mistake and he killed the Egyptian taskmaster and so he had to flee to Midian but be, that did not stop God's call on his life so the Lord still called Moses to lead the people out of Egypt whenever Moses was in Midian the Lord appeared to him in the burning bush and God told Moses what he wanted Moses to do so Moses went before Pharaoh and said let my people go Pharaoh refused and God sent the plagues but Moses remained with the Lord even though you know it was a battle with Pharaoh not keeping his word, lying to them, not letting the people go. Moses trusted that God's plan would prevail, and it did. And eventually, after the death of the firstborn, Pharaoh told the people to go. And so Moses led them. They were He followed the cloud as well, but Moses led the people the way that God wanted them to go. Also, God used Moses whenever the sea needed to be split. He told Moses to stretch his rod, and Moses did so, and God split the sea. Anytime there was a miracle that needed to be performed in the Hebrew camp, God used Moses to do it before everyone. So Moses had a great life. He lived for the Lord, and he did God's work. 40 years is up, and it's time for the Hebrews to go into the promised land. So Moses is about 120 at this time. And he knew that it was time for them to go into the land. And so he desired to go as well. So he asked the Lord, he said, God, please let me cross over into the promised land and see the wonderful land, the beautiful rolling hills. And he prayed and asked God, even though the Lord had already told him no, he still asked the Lord. He said, God, could I please go into the promised land? But God answered him and said, no. And God said, don't speak to me about it again. So not only did God tell Moses no, but the Lord said, don't pray about it anymore. The answer was a no. And so I'm sure that hurt Moses to not be able to go into the promised land. But that was God's will for him. And not just that, but Moses did a lot for the Lord. And so this just was not a part of God's plan for him. And so Moses knew that his death was near. And so he wanted the people to understand that he was no longer going to be able to lead them and that he would not lead them into the promised land. So Moses knew that it was time for him to pick the next leader of the people. So Moses went and he stood before the Hebrews and he told them every he reminded them of everything that God brought them through and why God brought them through at all. And so Moses closed his message by saying, I'm 120 years old. I can no longer be your leader, but you be strong and of good courage. Fear not and don't be afraid for the Lord your God goes with you and he will fight. He, he will not fail you nor forsake you. Remember that Canaan will be yours and now Joshua will lead you into the land. As the people listened, they knew that Moses was about to die and that he wouldn't be their leader. And they were excited to have Joshua as their new leader. And so Moses said it before everyone. Joshua is now the leader. So that's who it was passed down to. And that's who we're actually going to start talking about next week. Joshua, because he will lead the people into the promised land. So after Moses spoke to the people, the Lord told Moses to climb Mount Nebo. And there he would go and meet with the Lord. And he would also die there as well. So when the Lord called Moses up the mountain, the Lord pointed out to him and said, look, and Moses was able to see the entire promised land, that mountain that he went on top of, though he couldn't go into the promised land, the Lord would showed him the entire promised land. So that mountain was high enough to where Moses looked out and saw all of it. And so Moses saw how beautiful it was, and he knew that the people would rejoice and that they were blessed by God to have this land and so Moses the servant of the Lord died in the mount there and the Lord buried him so they didn't have you know a funeral or anything for Moses the Lord buried him in the mountain and so the people knew you know when Moses didn't come back from the mount they knew that he was gone and so they now they look to Joshua to lead them into the promised land so this completes our Bible lesson and this is also our final lesson on the life of Moses we'll have our testing tomorrow